Today we're testing and reviewing the Zero-G floating vacuum cleaner system. It floats on a cushion of air like a hovercraft. And after all of our tests, I can say that the Zero-G is way more than just an interesting feature. In fact, it's a seriously good vacuum. So links in the description for current prices and let's get started. Lately, I've only been accepting free vacuums to review if I'm pretty sure I'm going to like them, but I took the chance with this Zero-G and did accept a free unit from them to review, mainly because it was so different. But I'm super glad I did because, as we'll see, it's really good. But before we jump into the test results and the pros and cons, let's hit the basic features. It comes with a really good set of attachments, including a motorized stair tool, lots of suction-based tools, including a genuine horsehair dusting brush, hard floor tool, and upholstery tool. It includes two telescopic wands that felt really well built. One is for electric tools and one is for suction attachments, though you can use the electric wand with the suction tools as well. The crush proof hose and handle also seemed well built and included a switch to turn the brush on or off for hard floors. It does include a little squeegee on the floor head too for even better hard floor performance. So, as I mentioned, it doesn't need wheels because it floats on a cushion of air. The idea is that it can follow you around much easier than a regular canister vacuum, not getting stuck on corners or other obstacles. But also, without wheels, it would be very gentle on hard floors. I tested this in a lot of ways, and it seemed to be able to transition to all kinds of surface types and sizes. It was a little slower on carpets, but really not that much. It also didn't depend on weight. I put 15 pounds of books on top of it, and it still moved very easily. In practice, while vacuuming with the Zero-G, I was really surprised at how easy it was to move around. It was a totally different canister vacuuming experience than I'm used to, mainly in that it just felt a lot less restrictive. So yeah, I felt like it was a feature that really mattered. So besides the Zero-G aspect, some other pros include its power. We measured its suction at 98 inches of water lift, which is off the charts high. In fact, I've only ever measured one other vacuum with higher suction. I also measured its airflow in several places and found that it was slightly above average, with 90 CFM at the hose and 55 CFM at the cleaner head. Its power showed up in a lot of ways, but one of my favorites was with its ability to deep clean carpets. But to be fair, its ability to deep clean carpets is also due to their patented power head design, which has a really powerful brush motor and stiff bristles for really good agitation. But in any case, our deep clean test, where we embed sand into medium pile carpet and weigh the bags before and after, it scored over 100% twice in a row, which needs some explaining. So despite me vacuuming the test carpet after every test, with vacuums that have scored 100% or near 100% on the same test in the past, occasionally really excellent vacuums will score higher than 100%, meaning they somehow found more debris in the carpet than I initially put down. Well, the reason this was so impressive is that since I've been using my new scale, I've yet to see a single 100% score. Generally speaking, scores have gone down now that the test is more accurate. So when I got a 106% score with the Zero-G, I decided to retest it. But it scored 104% the next time. So it's really good. On their website, they say, quote, unrivaled dirt extraction, extensive tests prove it. And although it seems like every vacuum company says something like that, it looks like the Zero-G can back it up. In terms of the vacuum's pickup ability for larger debris, I was also impressed. It did great on carpets, picking up everything from pet hair to Cheerio-sized debris. It did have trouble with extra-large debris like the Fruit Loops, but because you can turn off the brush roll, you could lift up the floor head to capture it that way. On hard floors, it picked up pet hair, fine debris, medium debris, and even large debris with a little bit of effort. Again, though, it couldn't get the Fruit Loops, but you could either turn the brush roll off and get the rest with suction, or detach the floor head and use the wand. In general, though, I thought the floor head was really well balanced, in that it delivered a good seal for suction and deep cleaning, while still having a large enough gate for larger debris and hard floor performance. On the crevice pickup test, the regular floor head did better than average, but you could tell it sacrificed a little bit of power here to be able to pick up the larger debris. But really, for a job like this, you would want to use the hard floor tool anyway, and with that tool on the crevice test, it was perfect. Literally, it can't get any better than that. On our filtration test, where we vacuum up a special dust and measure the air quality afterwards, we used their premium HEPA bag, which also has silver ion technology, and it scored a 70, which is a passing score. For context, 100 is a failing score, 3600 and 1200 are some really bad scores we recently measured, with the worst case being 52000 with a vacuum with no filters at all. So yeah, 70 is good, but I would recommend upgrading to their HEPA bags. Another pro is its edge cleaning. I don't mention edge cleaning as much as I should, but the Zero-G has a patented system called Edge Lift, which makes it particularly good at this. 
The final pros are just some nice touches. I like that there was metal where it counted, like in and around the wand inlet on the floor head. I also really like the action of the swivel, which wasn't too jerky. And I like the wand, which can stand up on its own. All right, so it can't all be good news, so let's move on to the cons. The first con I noticed was the cord. There doesn't seem to be a place to put it. It does have a little strap that you can use to keep it semi-neat, but I would have much preferred a way to store it on board. One quick update, I did email Zero-G about this, and they sent over a few ways to keep the cord neat besides the strap, so I wanted to include that here as well. One negative aspect of the air cushion is that it can blow light debris around, more on hard floors than on carpet, but still. I thought this would be a really big deal, but I did test it in a few different ways and found that really the canister pretty much stays put while you cover the area you're working on. So by the time you're ready to move on, the area the canister will be moved to is already clean anyway. In other words, the canister is almost always in an already vacuumed area. And even then, it's really only an issue for hard floors. I know I said in the previous video that it would take a lot for me to become a canister person, but I think the Zero G with its air cushion is something that's really making me reconsider my upright ways. In any case, I think it'll be a long time before we see any vacuum beat it in terms of carpet deep cleaning. In fact, I'm using the Zero G from now on to clean my test carpet before I do deep clean tests. I can't wait to put the Zero G up against some more expensive canisters to see how it compares, but I think it's going to do really well. So links in the description and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars for future videos like that and a lot more. Thanks for watching.